Today we have a very special guest, an employee of 1047 Games. Not just any old employee though, we have a game developer by the name of Ben Rocklin. He is a musician, a skier, a gamer, game developer, and of course a software engineer working on Splitgate. Ben, how is it going? How are you doing? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm doing great, Endo. How are you? Well, I'm really glad for you to be here and to, to meet everyone in the community. Uh, as someone who's doing all the social media type of stuff, you know, I get to interact with the community more than you. And, you know, you're just hunkered down, coding, doing all this stuff. People don't get a chance to meet developers of game studios very often. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into some questions about you, about your job, Splitgate. So let's just jump right in. So what do you do for 1047 games exactly? So uh, I work on the client side and I develop new features for that. So um, stuff that users interact with on their own computers, uh, that's the stuff I'm personally programming. So uh, some of the stuff I've made is like the emote wheel, uh, contamination, that game mode, I worked on that. Uh, colorblind features, um, low ammo indicator. So basically stuff that you see on your monitor as you're playing and uh, stuff that impacts the flow of the game itself and how it works. Uh, what was something that you've something that was really hard to implement but when you're playing the game you'd have no idea that it was just so hard to get right trickiest thing i worked on at least was contamination hands down uh we thought it was just gonna be a simple game mode you know you tweak a few values you know maybe write a few lines of code toss it into the game but it ended up being a lot more complicated than that actually to build. Uh, it was our first truly asymmetric game mode. So it's the first time we ever gave two different sets of weapons to different players. Obviously their abilities are different too with uh, the zombies having portal guns, survivors don't. It was really tricky to get all of that working uh, given that all of our game modes before this were all, you know, symmetrical. It was, oh, both teams are trying to capture a flag and they both start with BRs and ARs or something like that. It's a little tricky, but we got there and uh, I can't say too much about this either, but there's some more stuff coming on that front too, hopefully. So so you tell me, what's, what's it like working as a developer for 1047 games? I mean, obviously it's a lot of fun, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Well, it's twofold, I'd say. Uh, the first is the team. And I know that's a super cliche answer, but I've worked at a lot of different types of companies over the years. You know, I've worked for the government a little bit. I've done mid tech or mid sized tech companies. I've done startups before. All of them were fine. And, you know, my teammates were good at them. But to be working alongside just a handful of people with the amazing skill sets that the people at 1047 Games has, it's truly an honor just to uh, have a team where you know, oh, these people know what they're doing, they have the skills, and if we work hard, we can actually do this thing. And I think you need that for my other favorite part of it, which is uh, the freedom and the responsibility you're given. Most companies, if you're a coder, you know, you're given a design spec and you're told, okay, go make this, I want it to look just like this, I want it to act like this, you know, I. And then as soon as you're done, we'll take it into QA. And if there aren't any bugs, you're done with it. Here, you're given these features and you're told, OK, you have the freedom to create this how you see fit. So for contamination, I wasn't given a design spec. I was just told, hey, you should go make a uh, player versus player zombies mode. Or, um, you know, for low ammo UI, I was told, hey, there should be a little pop up on the screen somewhere that says you're running low on ammo. Uh, go make it happen. So it's really fun being given sort of that freedom to uh, choose the direction of the features and uh, go and implement them and then take them through QA and listen to both uh, internal feedback and then player feedback when it's released out into the wild and uh, then go and do more iterations of that. I think it's just really fun as a developer to own those features like that. Back when the game was really blowing up, you know, the July, August time period, what was going, what were some of the things going through your head at that <laughs> moment? Uh, okay, so a uh, bit of context, I actually joined back in April, so that was about uh, two months into my game development career. It was really crazy being thrown into that two months in. It was really exciting too. I didn't expect to ever be part of something so successful in such a small team, and uh, it made me that much more grateful for the opportunities I was given to work here. You know, I have to remind myself too, we're still in beta, right? So. 
we there's are. a lot more on the way and i don't expect that'll be the last of the uh, craziness we're gonna experience you know i think there's a lot more to come so i guess my goal right now is just you know be ready for that keep uh giving everything my all and uh hopefully expand the team too if you could wave your wand wave a wand and grant one feature with no effort whatsoever to Splitgate, what would that feature be? I think, and I have no idea how this would work, mind you. I've thought about it a lot and I can't <laughs> think of uh, how well it would work, but I think uh, PVE mode, like a campaign or something like that would be kind of fun to have if I could just wave my wand. I think that's a good choice. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you with single player experiences being a cool thing. Um, but that's not, that's not confirming anything we're adding in the near future. No, right? no, yeah. it's not like... <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite part about Splitgate? It could be either an aspect of playing it or an aspect of working on it. Oh yeah, uh, hands down the portals. So I think they're so neat because um, before now, you know, the the uh, arena shooter genre was, I think everyone can agree, was sort of starting to die out. And frankly, I think a lot of what that was was the gameplay itself for classic arena shooters. You know, it only evolved so much, right? Like uh, portals, on the other hand, I think they really reinvigorated the genre and refreshed it in a way that I think is super cool. Um, like when you have an enemy that's running away from you, traditionally all you can do is just run after them, right? But now you can just rotate around the map and uh, head them off like that. Besides Splitgate, what is your favorite game? Uh, traditionally, I, if you asked me a year ago, I'd say Halo. But um, now... Besides Splitgate, I'd say probably Destiny. Uh, I'm a really big fan of the raids in it, and there's just a huge community aspect of it, so I can talk with my friends in the game a lot. So, so you are a musician. You play several instruments. If we asked you to make a new song for Splitgate, do you think you could pull it off? <laughs> what, what would you do with that? No, 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 no. I don't think you'd want me to try and pull it off. Um, <laughs> I could maybe do like a happy birthday on three different instruments or something or hot cross buns and record that. But uh, <laughs> I'm by no means a super incredible musician, much less a songwriter. Uh, but that said, I think adding new songs to the game could be a lot of fun. And speaking of the future, final question. What are you most excited for about the future of Splitgate? Oh, hands down growing the team. Um, we have a lot of very talented people here, and I think the success that we've seen with such a small number of people really speaks volumes to, uh, you know, how hard my coworkers work and how smart they are and skilled at what they do. At the same time, I think we've been a little handicapped in what we can push out in terms of quantity more so than quality by just, you know, we have maybe three or four people working on the game client right now. And, you know, we had one person working on the servers and a couple of people working on data pipelines, stuff like that. So I think by expanding that team and also getting more people skilled in uh, areas where we've traditionally had less employees like the data pipeline, we can really scale our operations up. And sure, there's like individual features I could point out and say, you know, I'm excited for this, I'm excited for that. But at the end of the day, having more skilled people is going to be what makes those things happen. So um, I think even if it's not necessarily the most impressive short term thing from a player perspective, I think uh, building out the team is absolutely going to have the biggest impact on the game. So I'm right there exactly. with you on that. Growing, yeah. the, growing the dev team, specifically the people who work on the game. I think that's exactly what the players want to hear, the community especially. So yeah, exciting things in the future. And um, yeah, thanks so much for joining me, Ben. And um, Yeah, thanks we'll for having around. me, Endo. Yeah, definitely. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, and one last thing, if you want to learn more about Ben, make sure to check out our Facebook and Instagram pages where we've already posted more about him, a bio and some pictures. And uh, also in the following weeks, we're going to be doing more employee slash dev spotlights on uh, various members of the team. So make sure you don't miss out on those. And we'll see you guys next week.